And now, History's Made presents The Battle of Bosworth Field Fought with stuff from your house On a field in England on the 22nd of August 1485 Two armies meet By the day's end, a new dynasty will be founded A dynasty that will rule England for the next hundred years a bloody civil war will at last be decided, and years later, historians will declare this day to be the end of medieval England. But that is getting ahead of ourselves. The Battle of Bosworth Field is the last battle of what became known as the Wars of the Roses, a pretty name and a clever piece of marketing for a very unpleasant medieval civil war for the crown of England. The war was fought between two powerful families. The House of York, represented by the White Rose, and also Tins. And the House of Lancaster, represented by the Red Rose, and obviously, Potatoes. The explanations for the war are long and complicated, so there is only one way to explain it. A montage! Henry VI of England, hello, was apparently quite a nice man. Oh, thank you. Unfortunately, being nice made him a rather terrible king, and so he lost most of the land in France captured in the Hundred Years' War. Oh dear. He was also not a well man at all, and he was often so ill that he could not rule. Oh dear. So, very helpfully, the House of York Hooray! said that they would rule the country instead, as they had a claim to the throne as well. But Henry's queen and the nobles loyal to the king said, No! These were the House of Lancaster. And so, there was a war! There were battles at St. Albans, Bloor Heath, Ludorf Bridge, Northampton, Wakefield, Mortimer's Cross, St. Albans again, Towton, Barnet, Tewkesbury. Edward of York, of the House of York, was crowned Edward IV, and then he wasn't, and Henry VI came back, and then Edward IV came back and was crowned king, and then almost certainly had King Henry VI murdered in the town of London. Oh dear. Yes, sorry Henry. Then Edward IV suddenly died. But it was okay, because he had two sons, Prince Edward and Prince Richard. Hello. Then, Richard of Gloucester, hello, who was Edward's right-hand man, got a nice man to declare that the two princes were illegitimate, which means they couldn't be king. Oh dear. But Richard could be king, and so he was crowned Richard III. Yay. And then, the princes disappeared. And, well, nobody really knows what happened to them. But quite a lot of people think Richard III had them killed. No, I didn't. Don't worry. Most people think that Richard had the boys smothered in their bedclothes, not hacked to death. There are also people who say Richard was a brave man, a just king who made good laws, for the people who made most of the horrible things up about him were written by his enemies, especially the man who wrote a play about how rotten he was. The truth with Richard probably lies somewhere in the middle. But who cares about polite, measured, reasoned discussion where we could all just shout at each other instead? Richard III had been king for two years when, all of a sudden, But to her, my lovelies, I fancy he's being king in it. This is Henry Tudor. He has a claim to the throne of England, and he has just landed in Milford Haven in Wales. Hiya, loves! Henry Tudor is from round here, and everyone in Wales likes him. We think I'll lash Henry Tudor, son. Henry has been in exile in Brittany, but now he is back. And even though he is a Welshman, he knows there are plenty of people in England who dislike Richard. But I'm nice. There's a society dedicated to how nice I am. Oh dear. Henry's army marches as fast as they can. The quicker they march, the less time Richard has to raise his armies. 
As Henry marches, more of Richard's enemies join his army, which doubles in size on their march. Purr. My royal army is still much larger and full of hardened killers. These rebel scum will be crushed, especially when my loyal chum, Lord Stanley, joins forces with me. Ah yes, this is important, so pay attention. This is Lord Stanley. Hello. He has pledged his large private army to fight for Richard. Thank you, Stan. But he's also pledged his large private army to fight for Henry Tudor. Cheer, Stan! Who does Stanley intend to fight for? Well... No time for you to make up your mind, you dupolitous bottle. The armies have met just outside Leicester at Bosworth Field. Richard's army has the stronger position and more men. Not only that, but they have cannon. Commence the bombardment. He also sends forward his archers. English archers are feared all over medieval Europe for their deadly accuracy and incredibly fast rate of fire. And now an archery duel of scary proportions begins. Richard's archers have the high ground. I didn't come here to sit on a hill and throw toothpicks at my enemies. Send word to Lord Stanley to move on Henry Tudor's flank. Richard's men charge down the hill and fierce fighting ensues. And Lord Stanley does not move. And slowly but surely, Henry's men begin to push Richard's army back. Order the Duke of Norfolk to send in the reserves. I did, my lord, but his men haven't moved. Why not? Scholars are undecided as to whether the terrain makes the manoeuvre impossible for Norfolk's men to support you and get to the plain. Or... Or he's ignoring you because he doesn't like you. Have we still got Lord Stanley's son as a hostage? Hello! Tell Stanley we'll cut his head off if the army doesn't support our attack. I have other sons. Wow. That's... That's cold, man. My lord! Is that Henry Tudor and his bodyguard down there? It is. That duplicitous Lancastrian cheese on toast eating close harmony singing mining snake. Sire, that is lazy stereotyping. Shut up and saddle up. I've had a genius idea. If we kill Henry Tudor, then he can't be king. My lord, you're a genius. So Richard charges down the valley to kill Henry Tudor in person. He charged headlong into Henry Tudor's bodyguard. He'd personally killed Henry Tudor's standard bearer and was inches from personally offing Henry Tudor himself. But then, forward men! Lord Stanley, seeing Richard separated from the rest of his army, charged down on Richard's flank. My helmet, my kingdom for a helmet. And now a savage melee ensues. A melee is a French word for close quarter fighting. It comes from the word to mix, which is interesting, isn't it? It is horror and death. Potatoes, tins and milk bottles going at each other like there's no tomorrow. The pity of war. Richard lost his horse, and more significantly his helmet. And someone, or probably several people, hit him in the head with swords and other instruments of sharp and blunt force trauma until he was dead. It's all your fault. Henry Tudor was crowned on the battlefield of Bosworth. He became the first member of the great Tudor dynasty that would rule England for a hundred years. <coughs> Meanwhile, poor old Richard became England's last king to die on the battlefield. He was stripped naked and thrown across a horse, then dragged across the battlefield with everyone making fun of him. Somebody even stabbed him in the bottom for a joke. He was interred in Greyfriars Chapel in Leicester. But after the destruction of the monasteries by Henry Tudor's son, Henry VIII, his tomb was lost for many, many years until someone dug him out from under a car park in 2013. And so ends our epic adventure for today. And so ends the Wars of the Roses. 
or Henry Tudor very cleverly married Elizabeth of York, binding the two houses together in peace until the next disagreement. But that's a story for another time. Thank you very much for your kind attention. We have been History's Made, and as always, we are sorry. Thanks for joining us. If you have enjoyed this event as part of the Harrogate International Festivals, please do think about a donation to ensure that our festivals can survive in the future. Donations can be made by texting HIF and the amount to 70085. For more events, please visit our online hub, the HIF Player. It's packed with upcoming live streams, events you've missed, archive recordings and much more.